Welcome in to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. And on our show each week, we aim to help you create a better relationship with your money. Now, if you've been at all listening to the sports world lately, you've probably heard of primetime coach prime, Deion Sanders. Now, I'm a huge fan, and I want to segue this show today um, around him, you know, around prime things, right? We're going to talk about some tax moves because now is the prime time to start thinking about optimizing things like Roth conversions, RMDs, capital gains, things like your Medicare. We're going to talk about all that today on our show because before the end of the year is how you should be looking at it really over the next two months. But before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. So as a financial advisor, to me, I think the dread of tax season truly arrives probably the first part of the new year when everyone starts receiving things like 1099s, W-2s, 1098s, and so on and so forth. And that usually comes uh, for most people in January, February, and maybe all the way late into March. Now, at that point, it's really time for all of us to gather everything you want, to fill out some big painful spreadsheet that your CPA provides you and things like that. You know, obviously, and then you write your check. Hopefully you don't owe to Uncle Sam or write your check to your CPA to do your planning. But here's the thing. The fourth quarter is really where I think is most important because it's, it's what we're in right now. This is the fun part. And I know I'm a nerd, but hear me out. This is when you can be strategic. Taxes are like a puzzle, and it can be very favorable to you if you know what you're looking at and you have the idea of what you're trying to solve. The fourth quarter, what we're in right now, is for tax planning, not tax reporting. Now, otherwise, what I share with my clients here at One Capital Management is it's your time to be proactive versus being reactive. So let's not wait on this. Okay, now I'm in the minority here probably in thinking that tax planning is fun. I know I'm a nerd. I'm well aware, but the things you do before December 31st are typically what save you the bigger dollars. Again, being proactive helps you in all things in life, not just in your tax planning. So we're gonna talk about some key ways and what you should be looking at before December 31st, and in particular four. I'm gonna write down four that I'm gonna go through that I think are really important. And we're gonna lead off with this, number one, Roth conversions. Now, there is a void, I think, in, in this area of, of what we're gonna talk about, of a time period here between when you, let's say you retire and when your income stream uh, really increases again from things like social security and required minimum distribution. So the RMDs, right? So now earlier than you retire, the more you can live off things like cash and the longer you can delay social security benefits, the bigger this opportunity or this void becomes. Because those now those larger subject matters, you know, to go through the, the social security and things like that, um, we're gonna kind of glaze over it here. But essentially during the years that you're working, and this is for you that are still working, okay, everyone watching here and listening, the largest drivers of your taxable income are what? Your wages, you know, what you're earning, and really any other business income or any other income from commissions or self-employment you might have. Now shift over to when you're retired, whether you're thinking about that or you already are retired, your taxable income, basically your overall taxes, tend to fall, and it really depends for everybody on how much, but they fall because now you turn to things like Social Security, uh, pensions, and you start taking maybe from your retirement accounts and distributions. So for example, I mean, these things pop back up, you know, hence this void I'm talking about, where you start going from active income to maybe a little bit lighter and then coming back into it. Now you can move things from pre-tax retirement accounts into Roth, that's Roth conversions. That's why I think the number one thing here I want to share is Roth conversions because you can move them into a Roth and pay tax at your current rate before maybe your rates go up if you see that happening. Now, if you think, again, your current rate is going to be lower than your future rate will be, you should work with your professional, your tax preparer, right, your financial advisor to evaluate this strategy. So number one, Roth conversions. Number two is capital gains. So I think before you're in, realizing them is really important. Now, if you had a crystal ball, right, like we all wish we had, let's just play fun here for a second and, in, and, and invest it, right, and say a million dollars at the bottom of the market in, let's say, 08, 09. You close your eyes, lost your password, and you woke up today. You'd probably have around five or six million dollars just looking at the past returns with the markets. Now, as I always share, the past performance does not necessarily reflect future gains, but it's important to note now, a few people maybe were fortunate in this regard, or even not even going back that far, just have some gains. It is fair to say that the longer you've held onto your stocks in taxable accounts, in particular to what we're talking about here on number two, the larger your unrealized gains are. So the strategy of number two here, I'm talking about of realizing capital gains, you may have a tax void here, here in your retirement years that allows you to sell some of those winners, we'll call them, without paying taxes. And here's how you wanna to talk to your CPA about it. Most people understand that we have a different income 
like that we all have different income tax brackets, right? We're in a bracket, a marginal bracket environment. Most people don't know that we have different capital gains tax brackets as well. Most people will pay 15% for federal side for capital gains. However, if you fall into the 10 or 12% income tax bracket, you actually might only pay 0% in capital gains. So once again, really important to talk with your tax professional, consult with them to see what is your proactive strategy for you based on your income bracket, because it might be different than what you think. All right, number three, we're gonna go to the Medicare world for a second. Here, number three, I want you to evaluate your thresholds. It's, I'm gonna call it that, right? So I work with a lot of CPAs, and for some reason, the, the IRMA letters, they drive them up a wall. Now, IRMA is an acronym that stands for the Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. Quite a mouthful right now in plain English. It makes your Medicare Part B coverage basically more expensive, sometimes significantly. So if you cross that, and that only happens if you cross a certain income threshold, the premium is driven from your gross, not your taxable, but your gross income for the past two years. It's a two year role. So as we wanna be proactive and evaluate you know, our client planning with our CPAs for our clients, we're already thinking about 2025 premiums because those are two years out. So unlike most insurance policies here, if you pay the highest premium, let's say I'm making this up, 560 bucks a month, which is the current highest right now, versus the lowest premium, which is $165 a month, you don't get any more insurance. <laughs> so it pays to stay below the adjustment threshold. So again, just like number one and number two, talk with your CPA about this as well. And the fourth and final, and definitely not least, is I think this year, fourth quarter of every year, is always this time to start considering about QCDs. You know, QCD, yeah, you know me. All right, we can have some fun here. Qualified charitable distributions. I've talked about them many times before on our show, on our discussions of the Make Your Money Matter show. Now, the deadline for all charitable giving is December 31st of any given year. This is why more money, if you look at stats, is donated right on the literally December 31st, that one day, than even on Giving Tuesday, which is by the way, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving in the United States. Now, a general rule for those who are older, let's say 70 and a half or older, is to give uh, from your IRA first. So if you're doing donations or tithings or things like that, talk with your planner about this because the second part you wanna pull from, so IRAs first, and the second part would be appreciated stocks, okay, and then cash last. And I'll share with you, being an advisor for as long as I have, most people get those inverted. They get it backwards. Just like all things in personal finance in general, what you should do should be personal to you. So getting, you know, taking distributions or, or giving from your IRA directly is number one here because it allows you to reduce your gross income, not just your taxable income. Now, as noted above, reducing your gross income obviously may reduce your Medicare premium. So you see how all these kind of work together, right? So if, you, if you're just a few bucks above a threshold, you may give enough to get you back down below it. So again, these are kind of things I wanted to bring up today on the show to talk to you about your CPA. And these four, I think, are really important and really wise to consider as proactive planning before year end. Hey, if you enjoyed our show, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember to make your money matter.